On this episode of Paddle Box, we're pulling the motor out again. You good? All right. So yeah, once again, we've had to pull the engine out because today we're finishing off our firewall and bulkhead panel between the engine bay and the passenger cell, which includes putting in this spiffy, definitely not just a placeholder, acrylic panel for a nice little rear window there. So we're going to start filling out all the metal framework that sits around that. And hopefully before too long, we're going to have an isolated passenger cell. Now, most of this is pretty simple. It's a nice big flat sheet of metal that we cut a hole in for our window. The only problem is these side panels at the edges where we have to kind of fold everything over and seal it all together. It's a bit more important here than in a lot of the car because we're going to have potentially exhaust fumes, heat, loads and loads of noise in here that we don't want in there. And trying to kind of, you know, get all the edges sealed up is kind of tricky. It turns out a huge amount of engineering goes into this in production cars that we do not know how to do and therefore have not done. So hopefully we're going to be able to just fold these over, seal it all up and then put our panel in for our window. So Wade's been busy making up these little patch panels and these are going to go around our rear roll cage stays and just bring the panel inboard to about where the edge of our rear window is going to be. But Chris, I hear you ask, because you're a clever audience, how do you put a panel with a hole on it around a welded in stay? And the answer is a little bit cheaty. We've cut a slit on the side and we're just going to kind of do that and hope that the metal bends around enough to clear the tube and then bends back without distorting too much. So we're pretty much done with our firewall now. This is pretty much everything in place. The only thing that screwed us is the seal for the window hasn't actually arrived. And we were kind of hoping that would get here because once we've got the seal, we can figure out you know, how tight of a bend radius it can fit, which would mean we could then actually put the window and the surround in. Now, with that not having arrived, we're going to carry on, put the engine back in and everything else. But at least all of this here, which is all the stuff that the engine was in the way of, which we wanted the engine out for, is now finished. So putting the window in later is going to be easy, easy enough. So that's the engine back in, which is really good news. I now have a lot of space in the garage again. It's only taken us a weekend to get all of this stuff done. But before we even took that out, I'd been working on the car off camera. As I mentioned, I was going to in the last episode, just sorting out a couple of bits for compliance. Now on the very back edge, we need to have these panels rounded over. These are just 0.9 mil sheets that just ended and you can't have that. You need a two and a half mil radius so that you don't injure people if you're reversing or they bump into it or something like that. It seems perfectly reasonable. So I've welded on some five mil rod all the way around this outside edge. So now we have a two and a half mil radius across the back, which is really, really nice. It's come together really nicely. and It's given the back of the panel a little bit more strength to boot, which is excellent news. And I've also finished off these drainage channels. Now these come all the way down here from the top right the way down and all the water pours off the end. I have tested them, they do work, so that is another big win for getting little jobs out the way that are frankly too boring to film and put in yet another episode, especially when we'd already done that. So the next job is gonna be finishing up the exhaust because we need to cut the uh, passenger side one off because they were a little bit like this where we obviously were absolute professionals when we did it last time and uh, we definitely put it together right. No we didn't. Um, we, we kind of put it together on a very cluttered bench and it was a massive failure and it was down about five degrees. So we put that back up, we can install that again, that's all good. Now the centre section of the exhaust with the cat in isn't going back on this time, we're just going to put the box back in because that's going to be uh, going off to get welded soon enough. But I have also got a heat shield that I've made which goes between the two chassis legs across the top of the box and the cat and everything in the exhaust because we've got two 
dirty great fans that sit on that intercooler in the back. And that's going to draw a huge amount of air through. We don't want to be cooling the catalytic converter. We want that all to stay nice and warm and efficient. But the intercooler on the back obviously needs some airflow through it. So we've got a heat shield to drop in on the top of there, which we'll install now. So this is our exhaust heat shield that we made. Uh, it's made of one mil aluminium and basically I just beat over the edges and formed it round and kind of just test fit it, tweaked it, test it, tweaked it um, and made it work into this shape and then folded all of the edges over so it has a little bit of rigidity to it. And it works quite nicely. It avoids all of the pipe work coming out from the turbo that's going to come down into the intercooler on the back. Uh, and that's where we're going to go next. Now I've got the intercooler back on, we can finish off plumbing in the pipework that joins this into the rest of the cooling loop. Now this is where we got to before, where we had the intercooler uh, exit coming up that side into the throttle body. We had the entrance going down into the intercooler on this side from the pipe that came out of here originally, across the top and around. And we decided we were going to get rid of that and put a third intercooler in because we could. So I've ordered a bunch more parts. As you can see, I still haven't checked them or opened them to actually see that they're right. So this is going to be a bit of an exploratory job as we go along. I did manage to salvage some parts from the A3 and the TT that we took apart, however. There was some very useful bends. This one goes on and lifts it up so we can get across the top here, which is nice and convenient. And I also cut up one of the pipes that I had kicking around and drop the Jubilee clip off the end because that fits almost perfectly onto the top of the turbo. I've just dropped the Jubilee clip down the turbo, but I'm sure it'll be fine. And as you can see, that simply fits on the turbo like that, which isn't all that simple. Now, this aluminium tube or alloy tube here this is the first of the new tubes that's going to go in. This goes onto the end there and joins in with this lovely silicon section. And this one goes in down into this side of the intercooler, which if I can get it out of the bag, I'll pop on now. So that completes the very hot side that comes out of the turbo, runs down into here and hits our first intercooler. Then we come out onto this pipe that came off. I can't remember if this came off the TT or the A3 and will then go into a big long length of pipe, which at some point we're going to have to get beads put on the end. But today is not that day. And that is going to go straight across there. Obviously, we need to cut that down. Well, it's a rare occurrence when we managed to take the engine out and put it back in in one episode, which, frankly, I'm slightly amazed that actually happened. Yeah, it's a minor miracle. Usually it's out for months at a time. Yeah, and taking up space and getting in the way of doing literally anything else. Because remember, this going back in was one of the things to get the Golf engine out and actually fix that basically 12 months ago, which is kind of depressing. So we should really get around to fixing that Still and then have some fun. Yeah, I mean, at least on the one hand, the track season wasn't much of anything. Yeah, so I didn't miss a lot. So I'm, I'm kind of OK with it. But yeah, still very, very annoying. Yeah. But that's in. We've got all of this back panel in, painted up properly and ready for the window to go in. And we've also thrown some pipes at it. Yeah, we've got an almost complete intake and boost system. The only thing we're missing now is an airbox and filter, but everything else from the intake through the turbo, through the intercoolers, all the way back into the inlet manifold, all completely done. So it doesn't look like much out here, but actually in terms yeah. of 
the system, it is a, a fairly big step. It's basically complete from here all yeah. the way to the pipes, assuming we actually had the middle part of the uh, exhaust installed under this heat shield. Yeah, that's which, currently out, ready to get taken away. Which we don't. So yeah, but we've got the heat shield in. It actually looks really nice, considering that was um, a, a kind of botched attempt to make the engine. Yeah, it was meant um, to be the, yeah, it was meant to be the engine cover, and it was meant to wrap all the way across over here. And I cut it a little bit too short, and whilst I put it down, it kind of fit nicely. And I went, oh, "That's a really good idea." So we sat out here with a couple of beers and just panel beat it in yeah. one evening as it went dark. Which yeah, it looks pretty good as well, actually. I yeah. think it kind of it, it fills the bay up a little bit and just makes it. I know like OEMs obviously don't use big aluminium <laughs> sheets, but by covering up some stuff, it just gets it that little bit closer to feeling proper. Yes. And it, like in a way that I can't quite put my finger on. Yeah. By the time we actually might put the engine panel back on, if it looks neat enough, and yeah. get something over here with the with the um, the airbox in, yeah, maybe it'll look all this rust powder. reasonable. But yeah, we'll see. We do need to give it a really good clean down again come after the winter, basically, because it's inevitably going to get a bit wet and there's going to be stuff we haven't cleaned. So springtime is going to be a proper clean of the entire thing which will then hopefully mean it's nearly done and we can get some paint on it which will be awesome but if you want to help us get to that point you can buy some of our merch shop.pedalbox.show for t-shirts beanies hats stickers all sorts of stuff including a t-shirt i am i promise i'm wearing under this but uh, it's a bit chilly this time of year mate. yeah you can also jump on patreon.com slash pedalbox show and support us there from a dollar a month the $5 tier and up gets access to our Discord server and all tiers get the warm, fuzzy feeling of knowing that you're helping us pay for the mistakes that we're making here. Yes, yeah, you're, you're helping us fund what is some, sometimes miserable and sometimes really good fun. So hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. We'll see you next time with more work on this, the Thunderbird, maybe the Golf, maybe the SD1, who knows? But we'll see you then.